at the age of 60 60% of the amount will come tax free 40% of the amount will get invested into an annuity scheme which is going to give you a regular pension Hi everyone I'm Avni Raja and you're watching Invest Smart a show where we talk about all things related to your money your savings and your investments Retirement planning is perhaps one of the most important financial goals and of course the earlier you start the better. While there are various ways to plan for your retirement on today's show we are going to talk about the national pension scheme or the NPS while they can be an excellent addition to your retirement portfolio people are still unsure about whether they should opt for it. So today we are going to try and break it down for you and help you decide whether it is a good fit for your portfolio. Joining me on the show is Bryn Agarwal, founder of Finsafe India. Bryn, thank you so much for joining us on Invest Smart. Before we get to the NPS, uh, I want your uh, you know quick word on retirement planning itself because this is something that's often given a low priority, but it should be just the opposite, isn't it? The power of compounding is such that even five years can make a huge difference. But any thumb rules or any advice that you would give right now? Hello Avni and thank you for having me on the show. Yes, certainly retirement planning is something that you need to start looking at as early as possible. A lot of people start looking at this only in their 40s and 50s and by that time the amount that they need to invest is very very large. So, it's really important to start looking at retirement planning as early as possible. because every 5 years that you delay the investment the amount that you have to invest is then going to be double so if not for any other reason just for this simple reason you need to start early okay uh, so as far as the nps is concerned uh, let's start by understanding how this product actually works um well uh, it is a retirement planning scheme and so the first thing to remember is that it is logged in till the age of 60 years and you invest every year uh, now when the investor uh, invests they have a choice of choosing between the various investment options for example equity or debt right so in debt they have corporate bonds and they have government bonds as well and they have to decide how much allocation they want to do to equity or to bonds now if the investor is not able to decide that you have the option for going for the active choice i'm sorry you have the option to go for the auto choice where the funds are allocated in a predetermined manner between stocks and bonds based on the age of the investor and there is a regular tapering of equity that happens especially after the age of 50 so this is the way it really works now it is a market link scheme which means that it does not give you a fixed return and at the age of 60 60% of the amount will come tax free 40% of the amount will get invested into an annuity scheme which is going to give you a regular pension right and in terms of where uh, the nps invests of course one part is equity but there's a cap of the maximum you can invest even if you're an aggressive investor and you choose the active choice is 75% Uh, but if you can take us through the other parts uh, uh, as well uh, where it invests in yeah so uh, of course you can invest in corporate bonds or you can invest in government bonds and you can choose the allocation that you want and earlier on there was this tapering but now the tapering has been removed so to that extent you know there is a lot of flexibility as such i would recommend to go for the active equity option because uh, when you at the auto choice the allocation to equity at the age of 50 i think comes down to about 35% if i'm not mistaken and you know it keeps going down further and further right and as we all know with compounding what happens is that the maximum compounding happens towards the later years right so that's not a time when you actually want to reduce equity allocation in the portfolio if you still have let's say 10 years to go for the age of 60 so what i would say is that look at the active equity option if you have more than 10 years to go for retirement okay 
Uh, now, Rin, if you can also take us through the entire annuity part of it, because uh, there have been some changes that have recently also been announced where the regulator has said that NPS subscribers will be able to get a wider range of uh, uh, annuity options. Uh, if you can take us through how this works. Yeah, so as I mentioned that at the age of 60, 40% needs to be invested into an annuity scheme. Now, there are six different types of schemes available. The difference is going to be in the payout and the payout is going to be different based upon what you've chosen. So you have the option to receive the pension during your lifetime. And then you could, option two could be to say that I wanted to go to my spouse. Option three is that it will also go to my children, right? Uh, there's also an option on, on the return of the amount and stuff like that. So there are five, six different options that are given that you can choose from. Of course, based on the option you choose, you know, the one, for example, where only you are getting during your lifetime, the annuity amount is going to be out there. Now, the change that has come recently is that uh, they are proposing, the party is proposing that those people who are committing more than 10 lakhs to annuity have the ability to choose annuity from different providers, right? It's not like you have to put the entire amount with one provider. You can look at splitting the amount in lots of five lakhs in different providers. Okay, right. Uh, how does the NPS uh, stack up against other, uh, you know, pension or retirement products uh, that are available in the market today? Well, I think it stacks up really well because when you look at uh, what most investors would compare it against would be against the uh, deferred annuity plans or the immediate annuity plans, or these are typically pension schemes from insurance companies. Now, the problem with these schemes is that um, the costs associated are very high. And hence, what happens is that you are not able to build sort of corpus that you could actually do with the NPS because in NPS the cost is only 0.05% whereas these come with much higher cost also all, almost all of these schemes would have a mortality cost also associated so what happens is that you know for for every 100 rupees that you're actually putting in the amount that it's growing to is going to be much lesser in the deferred annuity or the um, immediate annuity plan from the insurance companies right uh, the other option is, of course, equity mutual funds. And, you know, you could invest in equity mutual funds. But I think the bigger issue that happens is that people find it very difficult to remain disciplined and invested. Yes, absolutely. But uh, there is still a lack of awareness about, uh, you know, the NPS itself. Uh, the fact is that there are several benefits, like some of them you've pointed out, that come attached with the NPS. And another important benefit, of course, is the tax part of it, because even in the new tax regime, uh, you do get the tax benefit for the NPS. Yes, and that's kind of sad, you know, that people are really not signing up for it. Um, I think I think there's, you know, I, I see that there's a lot of effort in the salaried segment, and that's because most companies want to provide this as a retirement benefit to their employee. But when you look at the non-salaried segment, I think the awareness levels are really low. Um, I think a lot more needs to be done by the stakeholders to promote this product among the non-salaried. Because today in salaried segment, people are aware of it. They do have their concerns, right? So the biggest concern that most people have is that for such a long-term period, you know, can we actually lock in money into a market link product? Now, what they don't realize is that they have been doing this for years and years in the insurance products, right? I mean, most people have insurance products which they bought for 20, 30 years where they expected some return to happen and they didn't have those concerns there. So I don't know, but this is something that I hear a lot saying that, oh, you know, can I lock in my money for 20, 30 years without really knowing what returns I'm going to be getting? So I think that's one of the deterrents that is actually stopping people from investing despite there being a nudge in form of the uh, tax benefits available. Right, Marin. And to, just to add to that, uh, the fact is you can also switch, if you're not comfortable with having too much of exposure to equity, you can reduce that exposure. So that is the other way to, of course, address that concern about being invested in equity uh, for such a long period of time. Yes, you can switch four times a year. So 
I mean, the product does come with a lot of flexibility. I think the only flexibility that's not there is the fact that that 40% has to be annuitized. Um, other than that, I think the product is pretty flexible. Absolutely, Mrin. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and breaking that down for us. Uh, for our viewers, I hope uh, that has explained a little bit about how the NPS works and how it can actually fit into your portfolio as part of your retirement planning. Remember, the earlier you start your retirement planning, the better it is. Thank you so much for watching.